Rooster Teeth News is brought to you by Sherry's Berries. Go to berries.com for an awesome Valentine's Day gift. Get freshly dipped strawberries for just $19.99 when you click on the microphone and enter code RTNEWS. Hey guys, it's already patch day. I'm Ashley Jenkins, and today Microsoft has announced that two system updates are headed to Xbox One. The first will drop next Tuesday on February 11th, and will finally add the controller battery indicator everyone's been asking for, as well as USB keyboard support, the ability to see and manage your storage space, and control over your installs so you can prioritize your game and app updates, which have also been separated into different lists. The March 4th update is being billed as the Titanfall update, and this one will overhaul the party and multiplayer systems, both of which have been heavily criticized as difficult to use and a step back from Xbox 360. The announcement of the March update may go some way towards lending more credibility to last week's leak, since part of that claimed a major overhaul for Xbox One would take place in March. Another hint that the leak's information might not be entirely off base is an odd tweet by Microsoft Game Studios boss Phil Spencer in response to a query about the existence of Halo 2 Anniversary. He didn't actually deny it and even hinted that the announcement is just being saved. Specifically, he said, Never get tired of questions on what's coming. Just can't always answer as we need news at events. Halo 2 is a good game. Dot, dot, dot. Also getting a major overhaul will be Starbound, as Chucklefish dev Finn Bryce, better known to fans as Tiuri, has revealed that the current gameplay is mostly placeholder. He says, As it stands, almost the entirety of the progression in Starbound is temporary, built quickly to enable some basic gameplay during beta. In the final game, you'll progress through tiers of planets and fight bosses at the end of each one to gain access to equipment that will enable you to overcome previously insurmountable hazards in the next tier like an oxygen tank that will allow you to explore planets with non-breathable atmospheres. You'll also be required to amass pixels, the in-game currency, to unlock the missions in each tier, but the variety of ways in which you can do that will be significantly increased. You can earn them through farming, adventuring, building, and so on, and as you advance in your chosen profession, you'll unlock new technology suited to your playstyle. In the end game, which takes place on Sector X, You'll be able to join an organization and square off in combat against other players for control of planets. Or not. If you'd rather set off on quests or go monster hunting, you'll find challenges that will scale in difficulty for even the most accomplished player. And even though this is their first game as a studio, and it's not even out yet beyond early access, Chucklefish has decided to get into the publishing business with the aim of helping their fellow Indians get their games out there. The studio also intends to recruit a new set of developers to begin work on a second game. And even though they're not set on a specific idea yet, Bryce reveals the current favorite is for a top-down, open-world, multiplayer pirate game. And now, in two follow-ups to yesterday's news, after Ken Levine's revelation that the second episode of Bioshock Infinite's Burial at Sea DLC will take up to six hours to complete for those hunting down all the collectibles, comes today's announcement that the DLC has finally got a release date. I got one of these, just for this. I really wanted to use one. The second episode, in which you'll play as Elizabeth for the first time, will be available on March 25th and will be $14.99 standalone, but it's also included with the $19.99 season pass, along with the Clash in the Clouds DLC and the first Burial at Sea episode. Speaking about this second episode, Levine says, We are delivering a story that involves nearly every major character from the original Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. It is a story that will give gamers a new perspective on the Bioshock universe and conclude the story of Bioshock Infinite and Burial at Sea. So it's not ambitious or anything. And finally, Pokemon Bank hit Europe yesterday, and at the time, Nintendo didn't offer a date for North America beyond soon. But for once, their definition of soon is much closer to our own because Pokemon Bank is now released in the North American eShop as well. As in other regions, the app temporarily comes with a free trial, after which you'll be charged an annual fee of $4.99 to store up to 3,000 Pokemon from X and Y, or you can use the companion app Poketransporter to import and store Pokemon from the Black, White, Black 2, and White 2 versions, and those who try the bank before the end of September will get a free Gen 2 legendary Pokemon, Celebi. And unless any more news is rude enough to sneak in after we record, that's it for today. What do you most want to see changed or added in an Xbox One system update? Leave us your thoughts in the comments below. Then check out roosterteeth.com tomorrow for a new episode of The Patch if you missed our live stream today.